Hey guys, so in this video, we'll be going through the problem C, uh, C that is pull your luck from Nibis welcome round that was rated for div 1 as well as for div 2. Uh, the problem statement is a bit long. I'll not be going through the problem statement per se. I hope that if you're watching this video, you've already gone through the problem statement at least once on your own and you've also tried to solve it. Uh, but yeah, I'll explain the problem uh, in brief. So let's get started with that. So what the problem wants us to do is that, let's say this is a this is the board you're having, right? And there's a pointer over here, right? Now in, uh, it's divided in some sectors. So these are sectors it's divided in. And the sectors would be uh, uh, would be ra uh, ranked or would be termed from zero to n minus one. So this would be zero, one, two, three, so on, right? To n minus one, right? Right now you are standing at a sector X. Technically when you will rotate it, right? So you will go from here to here, right? So this will start rotating. And the wheel would be rotating, let's say in this fashion. So let's say the wheel is rotating in this fashion. So if you are at four right now, the next number you will be at is five, then six and seven and so on, right? So let's say currently you are at a number X, right? And the force with which you actually rotate is, uh, rotate it, uh, it is F, right? Now what would happen is that, let's say if you rotate it with F, so in the, uh, like in one sec, uh, one second, it will turn F sectors, then it's going to turn F minus one sectors, then F minus two sectors, so on, right? What we want is that at the end, so after turning these many sectors, at the end, we want that this particular pointer should point to zero. So if this is the uh, board you're targeting, so at the end, after turning that many amount, as you'll uh, ask it to turn, it should be standing at zero. Now this F over here, the force with which you are going to turn it should be a number that should be between, between one and P. Now they would have provided you with the maximum value value or the value of P and over here P can go up to 10 to power nine. Let's just look at the constraints once again. Yeah. So over here P can go up to 10 to power nine. However, N is limited to 10 to power five. Also the sum of N over all the test cases won't exceed two into 10 to power five. That's great. So how can we utilize this particular information and can we solve it? Because if we are going to try for all the values, so yeah, one naive way would be that I'll try that what would happen if I uh, push it with a force one, then with a force two, then three, then four, then five. So I can test it that I'll say, okay, if I push it with a force one, it will only rotate one, uh, it will only rotate uh, like a single sector. If I push it with a, a force two, it's going to rotate one, pl uh, two plus one sec uh, sectors. If I'm going to push it with a force three, it will rotate three plus two plus one sectors. For four, it's gonna rotate by four plus three plus two plus one sectors, so on and so forth, right? I can do that. But then this particular traversal in the worst time case would take me 10 to power nine computations, which obviously, as you know, is a TLE. So I can, cannot afford this. But over there, it had, uh, they had mentioned that uh, the N or the number of sectors in this, right? So N basically means the number of sectors it has that was limited to 10 to power five. Can I utilize this information? Let's look at that. So what happens is that let's say you rotated the force F. So I was saying uh, the, uh, the computations or the rotations it will do or the number of uh, sectors it would traverse would be F plus uh, F minus one. Okay. So F minus one plus F minus two, so on. I can also write this as zero. Oh, sorry, not zero, but one plus two plus three plus so on to F, right? I can write it in this form. Cool enough. Now what if, let's say F is greater than N. So F is greater than N, then what would happen? So technically, when we'll reach a scenario where F is equal to N, right? So if I add all these numbers up and I take a mod, I have to take a mod with n, right? Because when I'll be uh, completing a traversal, an entire traversal, I'll come back uh, to the same point. So I'll have to take a mod because this is circle. And also if I'm uh, at standing at a particular index X and I want to reach zero, then how many uh, sectors do I need to travel? So I need to travel n minus X sectors or n minus X modulus n sectors. This was, uh, this would make a difference because if you're x is zero, then this value would uh, give you zero over here, right? Cool. 
so you need to travel this many this many sectors right so with that in mind if you take a modulus then what happens is that it uh, it would ke uh, keep increasing or would keep uh, like the values would keep getting changed as soon as you hit a value f that is equal to n right so let's say this was a sum uh, s n1 that was a sum from value 0 to n minus 1 right and this you will add the value n right now because your f is equal to n right now so as soon as you do that that is uh, that would itself become 0 because n modulus n is 0 right so s of n minus 1 is equal to s of n that's obvious but wait s of n minus 1 itself could have some different values as well right so s of n minus 1 modulus n need not necessarily be 0 right so i cannot say that uh, if i'm reaching my s of n minus 1 and then i reach my s of n although this value would be 0 but this value cannot uh, can be a non zero as well so that is not beneficial for me i cannot make any predictions based on that what more can i do uh, so let's just calculate the value of s of n s of n actually is uh, n by 2 into a plus l so over here a is 1 and i'm saying since i'm going up till n so n is uh, l is going to be n itself this is the value you get right now is this value always divisible by n n no that's not the case let's just try it for a value let's say n is equal to 4 cool so this becomes 4 divided by 2 into 1 plus 4 that gives me 4 divided by 2 into 5 it gets cancelled out it becomes 10 now 10 is not divisible by 4 cool however if i take the value 2n right so what would happen with 2n so s of 2n would be 2n divided by 2 right into a plus l so a is 1 and l is 2n over here now 2 2 gets cancelled out this becomes n into 1 plus 2n now is this always divisible by n yes it's always divisible by n it's a simple integer which is getting multiplied by n so it's always always divisible by n using this information what i can say is that once i'm traversing so this is the traversal i'm doing so i'm going from 1 2 3 up to so on to n then there would be n plus 1 up to so on to 2n at this particular point the actual rotations i would have done would be s of 2n right when i'll take a mod with n so since we said that s of 2n is a multiple of n this mod would give me 0 right and so when i'll be uh, using the element 2n plus 1 it would actually give me a single rotation right or s of 2n plus 1 modulus n would give me the value 1 itself but wait we have already checked for value 1 right so if we didn't get a valid solution in this particular uh, in this particular range we are not going to get a valid solution by this also right so it's of no use so by that what i can say is that you maximum at, ma at max you have to traverse from 1 to 2n right so could there be a case that you shouldn't even be traversing to 2n yes there could be a case so let's say your p is less than 2n and over here p actually defines what is the maximum force with which you can pull the trigger or you can pull the lever in order to rotate it right so if your p is less than 2n then you need not uh, you cannot go up to 2n so you just had to go for a loop from 1 to minimum of 2 into n comma p you go through this loop you tell what the sum would be at the current index so sum plus equal to i so let's say this variable was i then you check that if my sum modulus n is equal to the required value now what is the required value the required value would actually have been n minus x modulus n right if you're getting this value well and good you got the answer so if you are if this happens so if this happens print yes right else co keep continuing at the end if you don't find any valid value just print no so that was the entire solution you just had to get to this particular uh, logic that your s of 2n right s of 2n mod 2 is uh, mod n is equal to 0 and thereby when you will be calculating for s of 2n plus 1 that would be similar to calculating for s of 1 itself right and that would form a loop structure so there's no point in going forward also over here since the constraints for n are limited to 10 to the power 5 hence it makes sense for us to traverse through all of these numbers or all of these uh, th all of these uh, range 
and then come up with a solution so yeah even in the tags you can see this is marked as a brute force solution because the brute, brute force is actually working on this let me show you the code so in the code firstly i'm taking the required so what is required required is basically n minus x uh, modulus n right then the current sum is set to zero in each of this iteration i'll increase the sum i'll check if my sum mod n is equal to the required if that's the case print a yes and return if that's not the case keep continuing so yeah that's it for the solution i hope you understood it well if you st uh, still have any doubts let me know cool guys bye bye